Your Omaha High is being sponsored by Best Buy Signs, creator of the Omaha Parks Program, OmahaFastFoods.com, Coles Pharmacy and Home Care, Certified Transmission, Centrist Federal Credit Union, Shoulder, Rotella's Italian Bakery, La Peeps Restaurant, Performance Auto Group, Two Men and a Truck, Crane Landscape Construction, Shout Weekly, Mid-America Speakers Bureau, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Critter Control. Welcome to Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg, the show that will leave you feeling great about yourself, Omaha's heroes, and Omaha, where we live, work, and play. So park yourself on the bench and have fun. Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg, the show that you turn to every Saturday morning to feel good, to feel good about yourself, to feel good about the city of Omaha, to feel good about the nonprofits who do, who do such tremendous work right here in the Omaha area, and of course to meet individuals who have done magnificent things in their lives because we have people on the show that you turn to every week. You learn from them, you learn from their success, you learn from their drive, you learn from their persistence. And I gotta tell you, we've got somebody really special today. Can you imagine for a moment a 17-year-old international fashion designer right here from Omaha, Nebraska, who recently returned from Paris as the only United States representative in the very first Paris showing in the Eiffel Tower. Right here, we have Kate Waltz. And Kate, welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. We all look forward to talking to you a little bit later to learn about your success, your design for life, and how we can learn from it. But we always want to remember in this show, we always start off with four motivational vignettes, ideas that you can take into your life to help improve it, no matter where you are in life, no matter what level, you can always jump higher. <laughs> And by the way, when we say jump higher, I am referring, of course, to a trampoline. Now, what would happen if you, for the very first time, had a trampoline? What would you do? Well, first of all, you'd kind of look at it, but then what would you do? You would start taking little steps. You'd go on the thing and you'd jump up just a little bit, not too much. And let's assume for a moment that you would do that for about five minutes. What would happen after that five minutes of those little jumps on the trampoline? Well, you know the answer, you're gonna get bored. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna try and jump even higher. You'll do that for five minutes and then you're gonna get bored. And then during that entire session with the trampoline, you're actually going to try to jump as high as you possibly can and repeat that time and time again. That's what the fun of a trampoline is. And if you really feel good about yourself, if you really have a terrific sense of self-confidence and self-esteem, and if you're a risk taker, you might even eventually try and do flips. That's the beauty of the trampoline. But let me ask you this question. In life, how often do you just take those little steps? That's all you want to do, just a little bit up and down. You don't want to take any risks. You just want to be in that so-called comfort zone and almost never do you take that larger leap, and almost never do you try and go high as you possibly can. You're just at that same level. The one thing we wanna learn from the trampoline is that yes, we can go beyond these little steps. Not only can we, we do. So if we do that in the trampoline, as you followed my story, we need to do the exact same thing in our lifetime. Start off a little bit small, but then say to yourself, how high can I go? How high can I jump? By the way, it's only me. There's nobody else. There's nobody else there to stop me. So from now on, take a look at your life. When you get out of bed in the morning, when you put your feet on the floor, you know what I'm about to say. Just think it's a trampoline and jump as often and as high as you possibly can. And by the way, when you're done doing that, one of the things you always want to remember is the following. You like ice cream. Ice cream's delicious. I want you to imagine for a moment that for the very first time you go to the freezer and you try and take out a big, big tub of ice cream. You know the ones. Now there you are, you've got that ice cream scooper. You're ready for it. And you have to take that top off. It's a little bit difficult, but you get through it because you know what's waiting for you. And all of a sudden, the top is off. 
And there it is, that great layer of ice cream. You take that scoop, you're salivating, you want it. You begin to scoop it, but what happens? There is resistance. It's a hard thing to do. You know that when it's frozen, it's not the easiest thing to do. So what do you do? Do you put the ice cream scooper down, give up and say, well, this ice cream tub is not for me. The work is way too hard. Of course not. What you do is you say to yourself, all right, I've just got to put a little bit more pressure. I've got to get deeper into it because I know the more pressure I put into it, the more work I put into it, the more energy I put into it, the more I'm going to get out of it. Now, sometimes we see something in our lives that we want very badly. We deserve it. We see it. It's right in front of us, either in a vision, in a goal, or something we want to achieve. And then we start with it. In the beginning, it's kind of hard. <laughs> now, many of us walk away. <laughs> many of us say, uh-uh, I don't want to do that. We should not do that. We should take a look at opportunities in the same exact way that we take a look at that tub of ice cream. All you got to do is work. All you got to do is scoop out the part for your life. Now, how often in life, by the way, have you said to yourself the following? You heard somebody say something, and right after they say it, you say out loud, geez, I was about to say that, but you didn't. Somebody else did it before you. You can't take credit for what they said as much as you try to, but it was in the back of your mind. You just didn't say it first. What does that say? Were you afraid to say it? Did you have a lack of confidence? Did you not know how to say it? You can't take credit for what someone else did first. When you have a thought, when you have an idea, don't wait for somebody else to do it. Don't wait for somebody else to say it. Get out there and you, you be the first one to say it. You be the first one to create it. You be the first one to make it. Never allow your yourself that escape clause that says, well, I, I was going to say it. Oh, I was going to do it. Uh-uh. You be the one that says it first, and then you let everybody follow you, and they say, hey, you know what? I would have said that. You get the pleasure to say, hey, I said it first. I did it first. Now, how often do we go to a buffet? It's a wonderful thing, right? There's no menu, by the way. So it's not one of these restaurants where you come in and you see a menu. Uh-uh. You find your table, you go to the buffet, and there is a selection of appetizers, entrees, desserts, beverages, a whole potpourri of things for you to eat. And of course, what do you do? You make a decision as to what you want from the selection. It's great. You don't stay with one thing. As a matter of fact, when you go back for seconds, and you have to admit to yourself you do that, do you always go back and get the same thing? Probably not. You try different varieties. You know that there are alternatives available for you. Now, you know what I'm about to say. <laughs> what about in life? How often do we just take a look at what's offered to us, and we just take a look at that one column, and we don't even step out of bounds? I want each and every one of us to think about our lives like a buffet line. You can go back for seconds. You can go back for more. You can have a selection of anything, anything that you want in life. It's all there for you. There are no restrictions. So think of life as your permanent diet of growth and achievement as if you were on the buffet line. So let's go ahead and review the four vignettes that we talked about today. Number one, the trampoline. Just keep on jumping in life. Get your feet on the floor and jump up as high as you want to. Remember that sometimes you want something very bad. It's going to resist you, just like the tub of ice cream. But just keep on digging for it until you finally are able to scoop it out. And remember, you're the one that says it first. You're the one that does it first. You let other people compliment you on what you said and what you did. And remember, life is full of opportunities, full of things for you to do, full of things for things to happen with. So go ahead, take these four motivational vignettes and add them to your life. Now, with this time during the show, we always talk about a nonprofit organization that does tremendous things in the Omaha area. Let's today talk about the Building Healthy Futures. Listen very carefully. Building Healthy Futures' mission is to improve access to health care for underserved children in an effort to support learning. With 50% of the children in Douglas and Sarpy counties indicating that they do not have regular health care providers, 
many children experience limited health care and medical conditions that interfere with the academic success of a child. Therefore, in an effort to ensure every child has access to quality health care, Building Healthy Futures has formed strong partnerships with the community's health systems to rethink how care is provided to these underserved children. To that end, two initiatives have grown through the collective efforts of the health care systems, the school districts, and community stakeholders. The first one is a school-based health center which brings and provides convenient, affordable, and high-quality care services for students attending Omaha Public Schools and their minor siblings. Believe it or not, to date, since August 2010, the Health Services Center has served over 17,950 children. They also have a program with school-based dental services, and those are provided in partnership with the Children Oral Health Collaborative and focuses on bringing oral health care to the school. Listen to this, 4,456 children in OPS were provided care. Building Healthy Futures will continue to work toward bridging the gap and connecting all children to health care services. To learn more about Building Healthy Futures, please visit www.buildinghealthyfutures.org. And now, I got to tell you something. What were some of the things that you were thinking about when you were eight years old? Did you have your future planned out? Did you have a design on what you wanted to do? Well, you are about to meet an individual who very, very early in life said, you know what, I'm going to be a fashion designer. <laughs> and recently she returned from Paris, as I mentioned earlier, and was the only United States representative in the first Eiffel Tower fashion show held in Paris. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want you at home to applaud. I know you can do it <laughs> as we meet Kate Walsh. And welcome to the show, Kate. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So let's, let's get right to the beginning of your fashion life. Now, how old were you when you first designed your first idea, put it on a pencil and paper, and said, wow, this is fashion? How, how old were you? My mom says I've been designing since I could hold a crayon. <laughs> um, and I, she always said that I w was making little dresses out of tissue paper and things like that. She never had Kleenexes in the house because I would use them all up. <laughs> um, wow. But I first sewed my first um, garment when I was eight years old. Um, because I had started in 4-H. Yes. Um, and I took this little pair of jeans and used my mom's cookie cutters right. and just covered them in glitter and I don't know, I made them all girly. So at age four <laughs> and eight, when everybody is playing with dolls, you're creating dresses and fashions for yeah. those dolls and eventually real people. Yeah. And yeah. eventually <laughs> moving forward. That's amazing. So how old were you when you were in your first fashion show? Um, I had just turned 13 when I did my first fashion show, which was Omaha Fashion Week. Um, and they actually approached me and asked me to be in the show, which was insane for me because it was like one of my wildest dreams to be in Omaha Fashion Week. So. There, now, had you ever competed before? Because I think one time I read that when you were eight years old, you competed in the contest and you kind of beat out high schoolers? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, in 4-H, they have a little competition. and. Um, I entered in this pair of jeans that I was talking about, and right. I beat all the high schoolers, um, one grand champion. <laughs> now, <laughs> so. wait a second. Where did you get the nerve, as someone who's eight years old, to compete against high schoolers? I mean, nobody does that. <laughs> um, I've, I've always been ambitious, and my parents have been really supportive, so I mean, I just went for it. You I just went think for about it. it. No <laughs> barriers, no limits, no nothing. <laughs> nothing to lose. <laughs> you know, I want you to think about that. Here is an individual who just used the expression, nothing to lose, I went for it. She went ahead in a fashion contest at eight years old and beat high schoolers. It's only one reason. She wanted to, she knew she could win, and it was a passion that she had. So for those adults that are out there right now watching this show, I want you to think about a design on life that you have. Now the question is, are you afraid to move forward with it? Or are you going to do something like Kate did and said, you know what, I don't care. I want to go for it. I want to do it. I want you to write down things that you want to do in your life and follow the path that Kate followed and just adopt it to the, your dreams and everything that you want to pursue. All right, so at age 13, you were in this contest and, and you did exceptionally well. And then what happened after that? 
Um, so yeah, after I started selling them in the boutique, that's really where I got most of my custom customer base um, and really learned about the whole retail world. <laughs> and then at 13, when I was in Omaha Fashion Week, that's when um, I got a lot of press and then other shows approached me and I've I've participated in over 40 fashion shows around the United States um, since then. Since then, so between the ages of 13 and 17, yeah, <laughs> over 40 shows. Yeah. <laughs> so when you were 13, right before you went to that first fashion show, and you told your friends, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to be in this fashion show." <laughs> what they say? Uh, they they just thought it was almost sort of funny, like because it was so hard to believe. I was, you know, I went to a little small town school, and right. no one really had. Um, it was sort of crazy to have these big ambitions, sure. but um, did, I mean, you, all did you let them <laughs> stop you? I mean, when someone says, oh yeah, sure, Kate, you're gonna do it, you know, they're, they're just trying to be nice to you. <laughs> did that stop you did, or did it actually fuel more energy or, in, or enthusiasm? How did you react to that? Yeah, it definitely um, made me just wanna succeed even more because I've always been really competitive and just driven to prove people wrong, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's a great way to do it. In your own words, describe competitive. What does that mean to you? Um, well, I mean, for the most part, it should just be, you know, doing your best and sure. competing against what you've done in the past. Um, but I think it is important to be aware of, you know, what's going on around you um, and make sure you're not being too, you know, similar to them. Sure, or, sure. Um, you know, so let's talk best. about competition. <laughs> she basically said two very important things. Number one, always improve from where you were before. And number two, just get out there and do better than anyone else. <laughs> so with those two definitions, one of the things I want you to think about is, how competitive are you? And did you know the definition of competition even before she said it? Because that's a wonderful opportunity for each one of us to think about. All right, so you're sitting there and you're having all these designs in your mind. And at what point do you say to yourself, wow, I've got something, you have a fashion designer, you go ahead and you have it sewn, and finally somebody wears it. How long does that take? Um, it can take, depending on the dress, I've made some in a day, but sometimes it can take you know, weeks or months, but I mean, I sew them all myself, so it really just depends on my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> now talk about schedule. <laughs> J just a quick question again. I doubt if your parents are watching this, so you can feel free in answering <laughs> this question. <laughs> What is more important to you, fashion, social activities, or your education? Remember, your parents aren't watching, so don't worry. Um, well, I think overall education is most important, but I sort of prioritize, you know, my education within my fashion career a little okay. bit more than like, you know, the extra AP class or something like that, because right. that's what I want to do for the rest of my life, so I think I can learn more from that. So when you wake up in the morning and you put your feet on the floor, what is the first thing you think about, fashion, social, or school? Probably fashion. Probably fashion. <laughs> and that's okay. That's a passion of yours. But I bet you've got good grades. Yes, I do. Uh, and important. I bet you've got a great social life. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what you call balance. You see, in fact, you can have it all. You can have the balance in life. You can have your initial passion and then begin to say, but I want it all. Here's a 17-year-old that basically has it all, but you think you heard everything? That is more coming. Just pay attention to this. <laughs> so then, of course, you, you were in 40 different fashion shows. I'm assuming you did very well. <laughs> and then talk a little bit about how Paris happened. Did you go for it? Did somebody make a phone call to you? How'd you find out about it? Um, so it was actually, it was the Saturday of my, one of my um, Omaha Fashion Week shows, and I got this email. My mom was sitting there reading it. We were having breakfast, and she opened it, and she just had this, like, shocked look on her face. And I was like, what's wrong? What happened? <laughs> um, and she just handed me her phone and told me to read it, and I, neither of us believed it at first because these people had approached me and asked me to be in the show. Right. Um, and I, I honestly didn't know what to think, but um, I didn't have a very big amount of time to act on it because um, I needed to know whether I could do it or not. So uh, we just worked really hard to... Um, Put you know, something together. Needed. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah, I'm and you so went. in shock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you went to your, your mom and dad and you say, hey, you know what? I'm 17 years old. I'm taking a trip to Paris. <laughs> what did they think? Um, <laughs> I mean, it seemed like sort of a long shot at first. Sure. But then we, we, you know, we thought about it and we're like, okay, we can actually do this. And um, the whole community, Omaha community, has been so supportive um, as far as you know, raising money for me to actually be able to go. And um, I, yeah. So the Omaha community got together, paid your airfare and everything else that was involved. <laughs> I mean, you talk about somebody who's 17 years old that has that type of an influence. 
where people are sending her to Paris to be the only, listen to this, the <laughs> only United States representative, as I mentioned before, in the first fashion show ever held in the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> so you're on the plane, you get there. Were you nervous? Were you confident? How did you feel going over there? I, I didn't even know what to feel. I was so in awe of even getting to go to Paris because it's been such a big dream of mine. Um, I, I remember like we flew in, flew in and just seeing it for the first time. I like wanted to cry. <laughs> it was just oh, sure. one of those big stepping stones in my life. Oh, yeah. So yeah. So you get there and describe what the fashion show is like. I've never been to one. Who's there? What's the purpose of it? Uh, so the fashion show was actually very um, like they only invited a few pe like very particular people. So it was you know sort of hard to get into. <laughs> yeah. um, and it was really cool um, just seeing you know all these different people from all around the world and. It was produced so nicely. Um, so there's, it was on the first tier of the Eiffel Tower, right. and um, there's like the four, four sides, and then it was all on one side of it, and there was just about 200 chairs of very selected people. Right. And um, yeah, so they would just, they just walked around the corner and through it, and they had, you know, this amazing architecture in the background. It was, just, <laughs> it was crazy. Did you feel intimidated <laughs> at all being around other fashion designers in the in the world? Um. Yeah, I mean, to some extent. Sure. I mean, I have my, my age is always like my, hey, right. who am I? I'm 17, so. <laughs> were you the um, youngest one there? Yeah, yeah. And how many were there? Uh, eight. Eight. From around the world. 17 years old, very, very, very first person at the age of 17, which is in itself magnificent. <laughs> so the show occurred, and what has happened to your career since you've come back from Paris? What's it done for you? Um, I've gotten a lot of great press from it. Um, I've been in the interna international magazines like Vogue, Elle, Marie Claire, um, Harper's Bazaar, and Women's Wear Daily, so I've gotten a lot of great feedback. Now, let me ask you this question. We just saw a tremendous example of name dropping. <laughs> And I, I, that's fantastic. But you did it without an ego, nonchalantly. Because you know why? She deserved it. <laughs> she deserved it. How many different magazines? Five or six. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all worldly magazines. Can you imagine Vogue, Elle, what was the other one? Marie Claire Harper's Marie Star. Claire, okay. <laughs> Which is fantastic. So how do you feel knowing that your fashions are now internationally known? It, it, I still, I, I can't even put it into words. It's, I have, you know, grew up surrounded by these magazines and just, it, I never really imagined that I would get to be in one. So having my picture in one is just insane. It's just <laughs> absolutely insane. But it just shows once again what happens when people have a vision, have a goal, want to get something achieved, because that's exactly what's happening. Now I want to go back to something you said earlier. At age 13, if I heard you correctly, your designs were already in stores for people to buy? Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a particular genre that you think about when you design fashion? Is there a certain period that you look at? What, what's your inspiration? Yeah, so I do uh, mostly women's evening wear, but all of my clothes are sort of inspired by the 1960s, um, like taking inspiration from the cultural movements to the music and the art and then just the fashion that occurred during that era. And, but you were not born in the 1960s. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> so how do you know about the 60s and here we are in the, in the 90s, or not 90s, I lost track of time already. Here we are in the 2000s. How do you know what happened back in the 60s? I, I just do a lot of research, I guess. Um, I, I I love the Beatles, so I okay. almost only listen to the Beatles, and I just, you know, I have so many inspirations um, as far as designers and just the actors and everyone from that era. I'm just obsessed. So. Just obsessed with it. And you hear that word, obsessed. <laughs> and the question again, and you know what I'm about to say, each and every one of us, how obsessed are we with something that we want to do? Are we willing to put the work into it? Are we willing to do the research that Kate is doing? If the answer is yes, you will be the next Kate Waltz of whatever <laughs> profession that you want to get into, into whatever goal that you want to aspire. Okay, so here, here you are at 17. You're in the magazines. You're internationally known. You're right here in Omaha on your Omaha High, and we're all honored. What's next? Um, so I'm... I Actually, when I was in Paris, I looked at a school there and went in London. Um, and then I, there's some schools in New York that I'm applying to, but I want to go to fashion school. Um, I'd love to go, you know, in London, Paris, right. obviously. 
sort of a long shot, but sure. I'm going <laughs> going right. to try. All right. Um, and um, so I'll go to fashion school and then hopefully one day I want to open my own um, boutique in New York and then uh, I would love to design exclusive collections for like high department stores. But. Absolutely. <laughs> now, in order to achieve that, in order to design something exclusive for a high end department store, what do you have to do to make that happen for yourself? Um, I really just I need to work on my portfolio and kind of show how I can, you know, right. the diversity of my designs and just sell a lot of things because um, I need to know that I can sell things. Excellent. <laughs> one other question. If there was one thing that you would like our viewers to take away, advice and guidance that you want to give them from the time we spent together, if there was one thing, what would it be? Um, I just think it's really important just to not be afraid to start right now. There's no reason. There's nothing that's holding you back. You might as well just go for what you're what your goal is. <laughs> Couldn't have said it any better. And if you've got a VCR or a DVR, I want you to repeat that last part because that is an exceptionally profound statement. <laughs> Just go for it. And then you get to have the design of your life. You get to fashion everything that you want. You get to be the individual that not only achieves your short-term goals, your mid-term goals, but also your long-term goals. You're the one that's going to be able to do everything that Kate just <laughs> talked about. Kate, I want to thank you so thank much. You. We have learned so much from you. <laughs> I've learned a lot. <laughs> and you know what? I don't even have to wish you good luck for success because you know what? It's just going to come naturally for you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the world is there for you. And I know one day when I take Carol, my wife, shopping in New York City, <laughs> there it's going to be in a high-end store. And that high-end store is going to say, Fashions by Kate Walsh. <laughs> and then I'm going to remember this interview on your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg that she accomplished her dreams. And you know what? It's probably not going to take her a long time to do it. <laughs> so we want to thank everybody for watching your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg. You've learned so much this week from the four vignettes, from the nonprofit organization, and from Kate Walsh. The one thing that we want to remember is that your Omaha High will be returning in mid-spring. We're going to take a little bit of a hiatus, but all the new shows will begin around that time. So once again, I want to thank Kate, and I welcome everybody back to your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg. Thanks for watching. Stay high. Your Omaha High was sponsored by Best Buy Signs, creator of the Omaha Parks Program, OmahaFastFoods.com, Cole's Pharmacy and Home Care, Certified Transmission, Centrist Federal Credit Union, Shoulder, Rotella's Italian Bakery, La Peeps Restaurant, Performance Auto Group, Two Men and a Truck, Crane Landscape Construction, Shout Weekly, Mid-America Speakers Bureau, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Critter Control.